Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to talk about a movie because one of our subscribers here, uh, Aldor, asked, Dimitri, thanks for sharing your life story. Um, I wanted to ask one question. Can you make a video about the movie called Margin Call and explain what happened there from a quantitative finance standpoint? Um, okay, so this is more traditional finance. It's just how markets work. We'll talk about it. Um, big disclaimer, though, I have not seen the movie, but I have looked up the plot and read all about it. So let's just dive on in and talk about this. Okay, so there's two components playing into this movie plotline here. Uh, so basically what happens is somebody took a really, really big position, um, and in the movie, right, the world's going to end, it's going to bankrupt the entire firm, and they need to get out of that position quickly. Um, that's the general plot here. But the reasoning on why the position is so dangerous, I think, is something that is more or less the question here. Um, first off, let's talk about uh, margin real quick. So the movie's called Margin Call. Um when you have a position and you're in a trade, for example, so example in options, um, you'll have essentially two people that are in opposite positions of a bet here. So somebody says, you know, if the market goes up, um, I will pay you, let's say dollar for dollar as it goes up. Uh, and then somebody else in another position saying, you know, if the market goes down, you pay me dollar for dollar. So let's just say you have a hundred dollars. Um, and the one person, if it goes up to like $105, um, this person, right? they get $5 from this person. So they agree to give them $5. Um, and then the opposite's true too. So let's say you're at $100 and it goes down to, I don't know, let's say $92. So it's dropped $8. Um, now this person that was taking the long position, so betting it's gonna go up, they're gonna pay the short position, which is they will give $8 um, to this guy and he'll benefit when it goes down. So there's this contract, right? But typically there's a time frame on the contract so what ends up happening is you enter in the contract, let's just say January 1st, and let's say by the end of January, so January 31st, um, that's when we're gonna settle up on the final contract, and we'll see who essentially is the winner and the loser, and then the contract ends. The issue though is that over the month, um, the stock price is going to bounce around. So let's say it's $100 and it drops to like, I don't know, $70 all of a sudden because it's high volatility, and then it goes back up to 105, right? Depending where you are in the month, you don't really know who's going to win and lose until the final date when the contract closes and then whoever's up or down pays the other person based on the position. But one of the risks with this is that let's say the stock's at $100 and it drops to say $70, so there's a $30 gap here, and one party's going to have to pay the other party $30. What if they don't have the $30 to pay you? So for some reason, they're not financially stable and they're unable to make that payment. This is called counterparty risk. So your counterparty um, is unable to cover that position, right? It seems crazy when you say $100 and $30, um, but typically these positions can be, you know, I don't know, $10,000, they could be $100,000, they could be a million dollars. So again, having, you know, that, right, a million dollars to pay over to their party, you might not just have it. And so what ends up happening is to reduce this counterparty risk over the time frame of the contract, so in this case over January, um, there's limits set. So say the stock or the asset here is started at $100, right? And there's margin bands put in place here. I guess there's other terms for these, but um, <laughs> this is me uh, just hodgepodging this together. Um, what ends up happening is when the stock's bouncing around, nobody changes money. But then when you cross one of these bounds, so let's say there's a $10 um, up and a $10 down here. If the stock price gets to 110, um, then they have what's called a margin call. So you have to put margin up front as well. So it's just like money that essentially states that you're able to cover the position. When you hit a margin call though, what ends up happening is that the stock price is going too far one direction and the party that essentially is at risk of having to pay the money they have to put more money down to help cover that position. So when we talked about going from $100 down to 70, so a $30 drop, uh, there might be a margin call, let's say every $10. And so as soon as it becomes $90, um, the broker will call up the other individual and say, hey, uh, you're essentially losing the position here. You need to put more money down for the margin call. If not, we'll close out the position. So what this does is it prevents essentially, if it does go down to 30, right, and they can't pay that, it prevents the other party from losing all $30. Um, if they default on it after the first margin call at say $10, what ends up happening is that party will end up losing $10 here. So you end up having a loss of $10, but it's far better taking that loss of $10 than letting it go all the way down to 30 in the example. 
and losing a bunch of money. So margin calls is what happens when you need to put more margin into the account. Um, that margin is like safety money that helps cover the position. Again, you might end up having to add margin as it's going down. And then if it goes back up, for example, um, then you don't need as much margin in the account or as much safety, kind of like a down payment really. Um, and then you can kind of remove some of it if you want to. But again, that's what margin is. And this movie's called Margin Call. And the reason being is that the assets in this movie that are purchased, essentially when they move too far and they get a margin call, they're required to put more money in. And if you can't make that payment right, you default. Okay, so that's the first component of the movie is gonna be the margin and the margin call component. Um, the second part of this is leverage. And so leverage is when you borrow money from somebody else to make an investment. Um, the reason you do this is you increase your returns. So this is one reason I always emphasize people that you need a risk adjusted return. Um, so an example of what leverage is doing here is let's say I invest $100 in some asset and it goes up to 102, right? I have 2% profit and I make 2% and I sell it and I make 2%, okay? Now, if you wanted to leverage that position, so we're gonna double this, we're gonna have a leverage of two here. Let's say I put in $100 and I go to somebody else and they just give me $100 that I'm going to borrow from them and I'm gonna give it back with no interest in this case. Um, so I get the other $100 and now I have $200 and I put the $200 in at that 100 and it goes up to 102, right? what's gonna happen is you're gonna make $4. But what, when you settle up, right, you're gonna give the $100 back to the other individual. But on that position, you put $100 in, you got $4 out, even though the stock only went up $2. So it looks awesome, right? You can leverage your position. So this is what we call adding leverage. Um, you're gonna end up having essentially borrowed money that makes the profits much larger than they were before. So you can take a terrible strategy and if it just has a little bit of a profit over time, uh, you can ex like basically take advantage of this and, and make the profit quite large um, from enhancing the leverage. Now, the risky part, so this is where it comes in with the movie. If the opposite occurs, so the stock price goes from $100 down to $98, right? You lose $2. Um, in the first scenario, if you put your $100 in, goes down to, you lost two bucks kind of sucks, right? But that's how that's how life is. So now if you borrow that other $100 from someone who lent that to you, um, and you take that, now you have $200 and it goes down $98, you lose $4. So leverage works both directions. When you end up gaining money, you can make a lot more. When you end up losing money, you lose a lot more. So when we look at the story here, what it's saying is that, um, so Sullivan works late that night to finish Dale's project and discovers that the current volatility in the firm's portfolio of mortgage-backed securities, which is a derivative product, um, has exceeded the historic volatility levels of the positions. Because of excessive leverage, if the portfolio's value decreases by 25%, the loss will be greater than the value of the firm itself and the firm will go bankrupt. Okay, so this is where the leverage is coming in here, right? They took a position, they had the money to buy it, um, they could have easily have taken the losses and life would have been fine. But somebody decided to leverage this to the point that when you end up having that leverage, that loss here, it creates big, big problems. So let's look at our example here again real quick. Uh, let's say that, again, the stock price or the asset that's backing this is at 100 bucks. Uh, let's say you leverage the position though, and let's say it drops from 100 to 50, right? If you put your own money in at 100 with no leverage, and it drops by 50, you lose 50 bucks. So you lost half. Um, now, if we borrowed that 100 bucks, and now we have $200, and it drops by 50, you lose $100. So what ends up happening is you have to take your the $100 that you borrowed, and you give it back to the person, and now you're left with nothing. You lost everything, okay? This is essentially what this scenario is saying inside of the, the video, inside the movie here. Um, Maybe they even took it larger. So instead of saying, I don't know, this, they're saying 25% here. So to go from $100 down to zero, you need four times the leverage here. But in many cases, I'm guessing in this, they took more than that perhaps. So maybe you took six or eight times leverage. So instead of borrowing, you know, 100 bucks, you borrowed seven, $800. And now you have this really big chunk of cash. But when it goes down, you're gonna lose everything. So this is how this movie, is. the premise is working. And yes, this does happen in real life. People make really irresponsible decisions. Um, they don't manage their risk correctly. 
But this is what's happening in the movie. Essentially, they took a position, they overleveraged the position, um, and now all of a sudden markets are turning, and now they need to get out of this position as quickly as possible. But the issue is, is when you have large positions, you can't just go out and say, like, I'm gonna sell everything when it's dropping from, say, $100 to $50, right? You can't get down to, like, I don't know, say drop dropping down to $70, so you've lost 30 bucks. You can't just dump everything on the market and sell it, right? You could do that if you're an individual because you have a few shares, but when you're big corporations, what ends up happening is a lot of times these positions are so large. Um, so for when you're leveraging, for example, or your position now is huge, uh, this position is so large that if you went to dump it, people would panic because they would see this massive order saying, hey, I'm getting out, something's wrong, the world's ending. And then everybody else panics and everybody tries to sell at the same time and then the price will tank even further. So the movie, what they're trying to do is essentially get out in time. They're trying to slowly offload all of these positions here and become neutral again so that they don't take that massive loss. So that's what's going on in the movie here. Um, again, the margin call is gonna come. They're gonna say, we need more money. I'm guessing that plays into the movie here. Um, and again, the leverage is what really kills them because in these positions, when you have margin calls, you have to put more money up. And then also that leverage is killing them because now instead of taking a standard loss given the assets they have, um, the leverage ends up creating a position where they lose far more than they actually put in. So that's how this works. I hope that answers your question. Um, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Definitely give me the like button if you like the video. It really helps this channel. Anyways, thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.